Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. On our today's channel, I'm going to show you how we are going to determine end term for a particular sequence. That means we're going to describe the general term for a quadratic sequence. First of all, you have to know how these quadratic sequences quite different from the other kinds of sequences. There are many kinds of sequences, and some of these sequences are Fabonic sequence, arithmetic sequence, geometric sequence, telescopic sequence, and linear and quadratic sequence. So, we have to know the difference of each sequences in general. If you know the general concepts of the difference of each sequences, that is very simple to find the general or end term for such kinds of sequences in general. So today, particularly, particularly, we're going to see how just we find the end or general term for a quadratic sequence in general mean. Before that, let me just say something about what a sequence in general mean. A sequence is any arrangement of number. An arrangement of number is generally considered as a sequence. And these arrangement of sequence can be Fabonic, telescopic, or arithmetic, geometric, or any any other kind of sequences in general. So let me let me describe how we find the general term for these quadratic sequences in general. So now let's see how we are going to find. Let us find how we just find find. Now this is find. Find ends of general term and the term of and the term of the sequence and the term of the sequence and the term of the sequence that is five eleven one nine nineteen and twenty nine dot dot. How we are going to find ends or general term of this sequence in general? Now look, mind you, in order to determine the general or the answer for the sequence, first of all, you have to know what kind of sequence is it. So now let me let me just find the difference of the sequences in general. So what will be the difference of this term in general? Now the difference of the term is this will be 6 and the difference of this term will be that is 8 and the difference of this will be which is already 10. Now look, in the first difference in, in, in the case of determining the difference of this, this, we call this is first difference. Now we call this is first difference of the sequences. So in the first difference, as you see, the difference of each term is absolutely different. This is a non constant real number. So we need to determine the second difference also. So what is the second difference? It's 2. And this is also 2. Then the second difference is 2. If the second difference, this that means this is the difference, the second difference, we call this is second difference. Therefore, the second difference between the first difference is the same. In the second difference, if you got or if you have the same value or constant real number, we call this sequence is quadratic. Now, because of the second difference, because of this result, we call this is a quadratic sequence in general. We call this is quadratic sequence. Quadratic sequence. This is the reason that we say a certain arbitrary sequences, whether it is quadratic, linear, telescopic, asymmetric, or any other. So this is the main difference how we just recall this sequence is quadratic. This is quadratic, not, not linear, not geometric, not telescopic. This is a quadratic sequence. Therefore, how just our aim or our objective is how we are going to determine the general term for this sequence in general. Therefore, in order to determine this general term for the sequence, 
also fall, we have to represent what will be the general term for any quadratic sequence. You know that the general term for a quadratic sequence is always given by a n squared plus b n plus c. We call this is n the term for the sequence. Since this is a quadratic sequence, therefore the general term for the sequence has to be this one. This should be general or answer for the sequence. Now, how we are going to determine the coefficient of each term of this sequence in general. Therefore, in order to determine the coefficients of each term, we can, we can use two different methods of finding coefficients of this quadratic sequence. Now let me show a very simple example or a very simple technique how we are going to determine coefficient of each term of this quadratic sequence. So, this A mean, A mean simply, now the coefficient of the leading term, the coefficient of the leading term A is simply half of the second difference of the real number 2. Means that this implies that A is clearly or absolutely uh, half of the difference, the second difference of these terms. So that is so. This implies that A is clearly Y. You see? So whatever, whatever the kind of the sequence in general it may be, now simply A or the coefficient of the leading term in the quadratic sequence is always is always half of half of the difference of the second or half of the second difference of the terms. Whatever the reason this may be. It may be this may be four. This may be 6, this may be 9, this may be 10. Whatever these differences in general it may be, if all these differences are generally given by C, let's just assume that this is always C. So the coefficient of the quadratic, the, the coefficient of the leading term for the quadratic sequence A is always 1 over, 1 over, uh, I mean, that is 1 over 2C. This is what A in general means. Whatever this result in general it may be. So the coefficient of the leading term should be 1 over 2c. 1 over c. So we can determine the coefficient. And this implies that, this implies that, this shows that a n square is clearly that n square. Is that? That's n square. Now the second step should be how we just find this for n plus c. How we are going to determine b n plus c. So now let me show another very important technique to determine b n plus c, which is the linear sequence. So in order to determine what b n plus c, first of all, what does this mean? So now this is n square is n cell for arbitrary sequence. Let's assume that this is this is generally represents one where n is one, it is one, where n is exactly two, which is already four, where n is exactly uh, three, which is sorry. Now let's see. We have n square, is that n one mean that's already one. And two mean, which is already four, and three mean that is nine, and four mean, which is sixteen. Since in the very beginning of this sequence we have four terms, so we can this is this are enough to find the answer for the answer for the linear sequence in general. Therefore, therefore. Now, correspondingly, correspondingly, we can, we can write these sequences in general. Correspondingly mean this, let's assume that this is 1, and let's 4, 9, and 1, 6. So, we have this. Therefore, in order to determine B and plus C, let's just find simply the difference of this one. 5 minus 1 will be 4, and 11 minus 4 will be 7, and 19 minus 9 will be 10, 29 minus 
16, that is 1, 1, 3. So how we are going to determine answer for this? That means, now look, mind you, this plus this, the same, this refers to m squared. Is that answer for this will be this one? The answer, assume that, or let's find answer for this one. This is n, n squared is answer for this. So what will be this generally mean? What will be the answer for this equation? Because the sum of these, 1 plus 4 will be this one, 4 plus this will be 11, 9 plus 10 will be 19, 16 plus 13 will be 29. So if you find, if you find this value which is already bn plus c, this is bn plus c, this is a n squared, so n squared plus bn plus c will be generated for the sequence which is a n squared plus bn plus c. <clears throat> so this is how we are going to determine is general or answer for the sequence. Now, how we are going to determine bn plus c? As you know, what is the difference of this term in general? The difference for this is exactly 3, and the difference of this is 3, and the difference of this is 3. So 3 refers to the coefficient b. So this implies that, s implies that b is clearly 3. So that's 3 n plus c. So what will b c in general mean? Therefore, b3 means that this implies that we have 3 n plus c. So what will be, or how we are we going to determine C in general? So the first cell for the sequence, the first cell for the sequence, C n plus C is, that's 4. That's 4. Because our first cell is this one. So this is obtained when n is exactly 1. That means 3 times 1 plus C, which is equal to 4. C will be what? That's 1. Therefore, C will be 1. So this implies that C is exactly 1. Therefore, this is exactly 3n plus 1. Finally, finally, this shows that, this shows that, therefore, 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 the general term or answer for the sequence, this is given by, that is an squared plus bn plus c, which is exactly what? Which is exactly n squared plus 3n plus 1. So this represents this one. Therefore, the general term or n cell for 5, 11, 19, 29 will be n squared plus n plus 1. So this is a very simple technique how we are going to determine general or n cell for this sequence in general mean.